Everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is Your Power in Time. Before I get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can certainly do so. All you have to do is go down to the description section and uh, click on the link. And there's chats there, and there's direct mail messages, and talk back and forth. You share your experiences. I answer questions. It's a, it's a fun time. Next up is Astral Projection Lessons. If you'd like a lesson to learn how to Astral Project, be glad to work with you. I work with folks now all over the world. Uh, Zoom is great. If that's something that you might be interested in, you want more information, just go to the description and uh, see the email there and send me uh, an email. I'd like to make a request. Please pray or meditate on peace in the Middle East. We're just going down a road we don't want to go down. And I really appreciate your help there because I continue to read articles about the possibility of a draft in the U.S. in the future, especially if you get involved in a war. And, and then the Navy, the U.S. Navy, has been uh, instructed to prepare for war with China by 2027. So there's a lot going on. So we need all the help we can on the, uh, the spiritual planes. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, all of this, of course, started for me uh, back in 1982 with a book called Astral Travel by Gavin and Yvonne Frost. Now, a lot of it gets into Wiccan kind of stuff, which is why I almost put the book back. However, it did have a section on time travel, which fascinated me because I'd done a lot of projecting, of course, in space and certainly all over you know, the map. But it never occurred to me that you could explore time. And in fact, since then, I've done numerous time travel trips and I've shared some of them now with you guys here on Astral Club. And it always perplexes me how you don't see more of that in astral projection books. It, I, don't, I don't understand. Could it be that all those folks who are experts at astral projection just never thought about traveling in time, much like I didn't when I was a kid. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting conundrum, if you will. However, this book was good because it really clued me in, and it's mostly accurate, I would say, on um, your powers in time and what things are like. Uh, it starts with, as you progress forward in time, time expands or stretches. And uh, they give an example. Let's say you project to the year 2500. You can spend days or even weeks in this time zone. And then when you return to your body, only a handful of minutes have gone by. And when I first read that, that just floored me. And of course, it intrigued me. So you understand why I immediately uh, started experimenting with time travel. Uh, of course, they also talk about the reverse when you go into the past, you can spend very little time there uh, and you can't change anything. Whereas in the future, you can actually interact with physical people and in essence, uh, change things. Then they get into the color in time. When you travel in the here now, which is the present, of course, you'll notice that your color perception is slightly dulled. And that makes sense especially if you're in the lower planes. Um, however, as soon as you travel forward in time, the colors become much more brilliant. And that's true. I have certainly observed that. Uh, at first, I attributed it, because I probably forgot this passage, to maybe my astral eyes being superior. But I don't think that's it. I think that literally the colors appear brighter as you go forward in time. Uh, and... Um, the reverse happens as you go back into the past. The colors become washed out. And uh, yeah, I guess they kind, of, they kind of look like they've been hanging on the shelf for a long time and have just kind of just dulled in all that time. Sound, smell, and emotion in time. Just as in the case of color, uh, other sensory inputs change as intensity, in intensity rather, as you move forward in time. All become more intense as you move forward and less intense as you move back into history. The increase in emotional energy levels is particularly distressing in many of our more sensitive researchers. Now, I've mentioned this before, but 
Another word for the astral plane is the emotional plane. And, you know, I've worked my whole life in being able to, to um, get a handle on my emotions so that I, you know, I supervise them and they don't control me. But let me tell you, when you go into the astral and just the here now, the present, your emotions become more intense. So you have to work a little harder to keep control of them. As you go back into the past, those sights and sounds and the emotion it becomes more muted. However, as you go into the future, you really have to keep a tight control over your emotions because they can really get away from you if you allow them. They just become hypercharged at that point. So it's something that you really have to control. And it takes some work and some willpower. Your power in time. And this is very fascinating. I don't have any way to test it 100%, but I'll just talk about what they say. Uh, they say that most subjects uh, have approximately 56 grams or about two ounces of power um, that they're limited to in the, uh, in the present. Uh, I don't even, I mean, I know I've moved a couple of things, but it really took all my power to do it such that I was like exhausted for 24 hours afterwards. Uh, however, the instant that you travel back in time, you'll find that your astral power decreases to zero. I can certainly swear to that. You can have no effect whatsoever on the past. It is immutable. However, a moment's thought shows you the logic that as you go into the future, you gain a lot more power. Um, you can, you, I guess I won't say you can move mountains, but I've moved boulders far into the future. Uh, and it's, uh, it's quite heady, the power that comes to you. And I've had some beings mistake me for God, which, uh, of course, I always try to dispel to the best of my ability. But, uh, you know, you, be aware of that. As you travel further into the future, you're going to gain a lot more power than you currently have here in the present. You can also spy on your own future. Uh, I've made a couple of trips. Uh, sometimes, though, I wish I hadn't made some of them. Like, you know, never ask when you die. That's not a good thing to ask. Um, however, I recall once I went to... Uh, a future where I saw a portrait hanging on the wall, a picture, it framed. And I was looking at it and I was thinking to myself, is this my, is this my sister? Now this was back when my daughter was, oh geez, a year or two old. And I see this grown, uh, you know, amazing young woman in this picture who seems familiar to me, but I can't quite place her, you know? And it looked a little like my sister, but I'm like, who is this? It wasn't until years later when it occurred to me as my daughter grew up that the uh, attractive young lady in that frame was my daughter, all grown up. So that's, you know, another interesting thing that you can do. Like I said, though, be very judicious about how you explore your own future because it can be a, it could be a mixed bag. <laughs> I've suggested this in the past, but from a safe time travel standpoint, and by safe, I mean psychologically safe. Uh, I would start with small trips and you project by going faster and faster. For me, it's downhill. Um, while, while willing yourself with all of your willpower to go to a certain time. Uh, don't try to go to a certain place at, at the same time because that'll be too hard for you to start with. Just, just try to go to a time. Either what'll happen is a black hole op will open up and you'll be able to sail down it. You'll, you'll black out and then you'll emerge in that time and regain consciousness. Or you'll suddenly just black out and... Um, when you awaken, you'll be somewhere in that future time. Uh, who knows where? Whether it's in a body of water, whether it's hovering above the earth, whether it's lying in a farmer's field, whether it's, you know, uh, hovering above a city. I've, I've done all of those and more. So uh, 
you know, just be aware. However, uh, I just want to caution people also, you might want to start with near time trips because when you go very far into the future, there is a definite psychological toll because suddenly everything you're familiar with is gone. And we have this inherent sense that the stuff around us is permanent. Now, we kind of know that it's not, but we have this, this kind of, I don't know, setting, you might say, uh, this viewpoint that the stuff around us is solid. It's going to be there, you know. Um, and when you travel hundreds, and th not to mention thousands of years into the future, things change quite dramatically. You can definitely feel yourself uh, unmoored from whatever secure ground you currently f call home. So I'd start, you know, maybe a year or two or so, and then kind of work your way up just for your own psychological well-being. Well, that tells you a little bit about some of your powers and time that I got from that book, Astral Travel by Gavin and Yvonne Frost. It was uh, published, my copy was published back in 1982. I know it's still in print. Uh, just be aware, it's very Wiccan type oriented. The only reason I even bought the book was because of that time section. That's the only reason I actually purchased it because I'd never seen that information anywhere else. And based on my experiences now, it's pretty darn accurate. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, subscribe if you haven't already. Comments and questions about any of this, uh, always fun to discuss this and answer those questions. And as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the Astral Plane.